I think art is a form of expression. Um, I think people use it in a lot of different ways, but art to me is really anything that has meaning. I mean, art is the expression of self. It's sublimation. Um, anytime you have brain, a range of emotions or you just feel some type of way and you can't really express it with words or actions, you just find your art, find your safe space and just throw it out. Yeah, my interaction with art in my home country has been going to a lot of art galleries. My school growing up took us to a lot of museums and it sort of continued even after I left school. So there's a lot of shows that happen around my home that I'm able to, I'm lucky enough to be able to go to, so I like to go to those. It really depends because I have uh, a lot of um, African art in my household, so I've been very exposed to that through like paintings and sculptures and just gifts that they've um, given us over time. I also go to museums from time to time. For me, collecting African art is kind of a slap in the face. Um, I've had several conversations with like also my um, peers like of other African countries about this. And it's, collecting African art is just like mitigating like why and how they got the art and why they have it in the first place. Because it's not like Dartmouth went around and was like, hey, can I please have this? Like, no, that's not really what it was. Like collecting African art. Collecting Africa at Dartmouth is, honestly, I find it a really disgusting statement. Uh, I know what you're referring to, and more so because of that, it really irks me. Because uh, I believe the context in which it was put was that Dartmouth had been collecting Africa since, I don't know, the 1700s, 1800s. And if you think about that time, it's around the time when colonialism was really starting to take shape in West Africa and it was finding its way to other parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. So collecting Africa, number one, is problematic because it gives this connotation of passiveness, uh, which Europeans at that time really didn't have towards Africa. They were actively trying to conquer and divide and they were going into the continent raping and pillaging. Um, African art displayed in other countries to me is cultural appropriation. Like traditional African art, most of the time isn't art at all. It's like bowls and other like, daily stuff that we use and that colonizers most likely stole from us and then displayed in museums. Um, so clearly, for me, it really has no place in museums. It needs to be returned to its. Um, uh, original countries, and it needs to be done so well. For them, the British Museum to say that Africans or Nigeria can't take care of African art as well as them, I think is really pompous, but also very white. I think it's a very wide notion to believe that they are the caretakers of things which they traditionally have destroyed. If you go to Africa now, a lot of what we considered art uh, traditionally, or I should say before the colonizers like the British came, I mean a lot of it is lost and it's because of them. And the only reason the artifacts they have now have significant value is because they destroyed our cultures to the extent that the things that they have now would be considered rare. With the British Museum saying that Nigeria can't take care of the art that first belongs to them, it's kind of absurd. <laughs> because one, like this art was not created to sit in boxes. This art was not created to like be god at and looked at by like you know white people who don't understand like where it comes from, their history, their legacy. Like art, this wasn't created for that. And at that time, I don't know more or less, it wasn't considered necessarily art. It was like a demonstration of our history, our culture, and our practices. And for them to be like, oh, you're not going to be able to take care of it, is absurd. And I've had invalid because clearly what they the the point of colonialism was to show us what they 
saw as civilization. Um, so they've taught us how to do exactly what they're doing. Sometimes we've learned how to do better. So if you can take care of our art in your museums, then we most likely know how to take care of our art in our own museums. And furthermore, I believe that there is no Western curator who will know how to take care of the art better than the person, like a person who's actually in touch with the heritage, who knows what that specific piece is about. Um, Um, I don't think so. <laughs> Actually, not at all. I don't think the African art addresses on this campus addresses the significance of their meaning and their importance for the specific culture it relates to, um, especially because of the terminology that it uses. A lot of terminology is like very negative or very um, just like general. Um, there are several pieces that I remember talking about because we actually like one of the African organizations on campus, like DASA, we actually held a talk talking about like these issues like of African art and how we view African art on this campus. And a lot of their terminology is just so general. Like there's this one piece, I can't remember exactly what it was, but they said, oh, this could be um, of, this could be belonging to, or like the artist could be of like African, African American, or American descent, and it's like, what? Like, those are three completely separate bodies. I think they tried really hard, not really hard, I think they tried the bare minimum to try to make the pieces make sense in the space, but if you go to the hood, there's this duality between how they deal with like contemporary art versus what they call traditional art, and it's really, it's a really stark, difference because with a contemporary art they have a lot of conversations about like say there was one piece that had to do with Dr. Livingstone and how even though he considered himself peaceful he really opened up East Africa or the African continent in general to colonialism but in the same breath they will have something like collecting Africa at Dartmouth and be very proud of it completely refusing to acknowledge that that collecting Africa obviously came with colonialism. I think the contemporary part might, just because it's contemporary and clearly it shows a very different view of Africa, but the traditional portion is very problematic because it groups things together in a way that doesn't make sense. We all know that all the different regions in Africa, and even within countries, there are different ethnic groups and different tribes who probably have the same things but don't have the same uses for it. They don't even have the same names for it. And the fact that the fact is that Dartmouth really grouped them in a way that doesn't make sense. The descriptions also don't make sense. And the only thing that they've remotely done that m maybe makes sense is the fact that they say unacknowledged um, artist instead of like unknown because clearly we all know what happened to this person to like be unknown, probably died, probably had his art stolen from right underneath his nose with like a few guns and such, so. Uh, I went to a lot of museums and a lot of art shows uh, because they are pretty accessible in Nairobi. Um, so I, I wouldn't say that because there are a lot of pieces in foreign places that I missed out because I did see a lot. Um, what I would say is that um, everything should be modern. Um, curating African art <laughs> in um, non-African museums um, shape the way that Africans like understand life because when you have someone who doesn't understand, who clearly doesn't understand all the meanings of the, the art, and have, ha, if you have this person explain things to you, then you have a very biased and a very slanted version of the truth. Um, whereas if you, you know, if you were at home and you had somebody explain the ancestral explanations, the cultural and like the mythical, sometimes ramification of the arts, then you would have a more global understanding and a bigger and greater appreciation for your art because you would kind of have this very well-rounded view of what was going on instead of this very like one-sided um, tunnel vision point of view, most likely based off of colonialism and other stereotypes from like African people.
displayed over time. We really can't expect um, a norm to be created if we don't create it for ourselves. Um, like I said earlier, uh, it's very difficult for African artists to get validation if they only restrict their art to like domestic museums within their own country. And so like they feel like they're forced or even they want to just like achieve that level of recognition so they go to like international um, international locations. But at the same time, I think that these artists have to make the same effort to um, curating art that is like at home and curating spaces for art within like their home countries. Because the only way that we can create a space for ourselves is if we like push through like the cracks that are open or if there are no cracks open, like we break down the wall. Like that's the only way we can do it. African art represents everything to me. It's just, it's who I am, who I want to be. It's um, something that I can relate to. It's something that I find just, I think to me, African art is the best art, it's the most beautiful. It's all inclusive, it's diverse, and it's very different. Anywhere you go.